genuine incarnation of the Lord are all listed in the scriptures. Lord Kapila Dev is instructing his mother, through his mother actually, is instructing all of us. And in the words we discussed yesterday, the main theme was giving up our attachment for material objects and persons and transfer it to whom? The spiritualist. Transfer my attachment to mature the spiritual. As Prabhupada has said, you can't give up attachment. Just like if we say, okay, when you are Krishna God, you don't perform any activity. Well, that's a fight. He said, come on, I'm going to get bored. Nothing to do all day. Sometimes devotees come to our temple and say, I'm not really all day, I'm getting bored. So you need some engagement. You need some activity. So Dr. Pita says, give up attachments to material objects, transfer it to the spiritualist sadhu. Because if you transfer your attachment to a genuine sadhu, he'll give you the real message. And the real message is, how to practice the word on service. So continuing on the same theme, Lord Kapila Dev is further elaborating on a point that he's already started discussing. And why did he discuss that? Because his mother had an inquiry. What was the mother's inquiry? Who remembers? Mother's attachment was, question was, how can I free myself from the entanglement of birth and death? This is a question that we should all be asking. In the material world, you're always asking questions, isn't it? You look at any newspaper, full of questions and answers. The businessman is asking questions, how can we make our business more profitable? The politician is asking, in the middle of the world, everyone is asking. But very few intelligent people pose questions on spiritual topics. Most people find spiritual topics boring. Am I right? Talk about movies, romances, movie stars, they wake up. Talk about spiritual topics. If we can go on and fall asleep. 
because very few people have that sense. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhavanam Jharmanam Ante are the many, many persons that lead a fortunate soul who understand that I am the cause of all causes. So Kapila Dev is replying, he is saying, what's the definition of a sadhu? And he says, Kasi Gid, chanting about hearing about me, the Supreme Lord. That is first requisite. Hearing and chanting about who? So we are hearing and chanting on many subject matters. But what the scriptures recommend, hear and chant about the personality of God. What is the difference between material topics and spiritual topics? Who knows? What is the difference? Okay. Also in relation to what he said, material topics are boring, spiritual topics are enlightening. For example, let's take a popular, I don't know what's on top of the hit parade right now. And I'm sure there's some song on the top of the hit parade. You can hear it once, twice, right? Then you get bored, isn't it? But a spiritual topic, you can discuss day and night and not get tired. Often the materialists wonder, how can you people chant the same name and not get bored? You can chant the same and not get bored because these are spiritual topics, spiritual names of the Lord. And as much as you chant, you'll be satisfied. In fact, the more you chant, the more satisfied you get, you become. Haida Sagar, you can chant the holy name of the Lord three hundred times a day. You never know, felt, oh, I've chanted enough. Bhakti Siddhanta before he chanted his preaching mission, before he started his preaching mission, he vowed to chant a million names. And he chanted non stop for ten years without getting tired. So, spiritual topics are Increasingly fresh. Increasingly fresh means more. The more you chant, the more you engage in these activities, the more enlivened you feel. The more enthusiastic you feel. So, the definition of a sadhu is sadhu doesn't mean he has to be a sannyasi necessarily. Sadhu doesn't mean he has to be a Brahman. Sadhu essentially means one who dedicates his life to the mission of the Lord. Doesn't matter whether you are in a male body or a female body. As long as you are dedicating your life to the mission of the Lord, you are a spiritualist. Krishna doesn't discriminate. Krishna in the material world there in the in North America there is saying equal opportunity employer. You know what that means? It means you apply for a job, doesn't matter whether you're black or white, male or female, you get a job based on qualification. So Krishna is also an equal opportunity employer. Doesn't matter whether you're black or brown or white, male or female. If you serve Krishna, if you take the path of devotional service, Krishna fully protects you. So the definition of a spiritualist, the definition of a transcendentalist is that he is fully engrossed in glorifying the Supreme Lord, in hearing and chanting about the names of the Lord. And he talks about also spiritual subject matter. Now, hearing and chanting is the foundation of our spiritual life. Is that right? Nothing, no success is realized without hearing and chanting. And that is the recommendation of the scriptures. Prahlad's father was very annoying. Prahlad had attraction 
Get rid of the enemy. What is the enemy? The Prahlad father was. Say, Sadhguru, Sunday and Martha, the two teachers of the Lord, two teachers of Prahlad. You are not doing it here, probably. It appears that the sannyasis are coming in disguise and being much in my son. They said, You are accusing us falsely. We are Brahmin. We are so bewildered. Who is instructing your father? Who is instructing your son? But don't worry, we'll bring him wash him. So, last father plays a young child on his lap, massages his hair, and says, Dear son, what did you learn in school today? One of the various subjects you learned, what were the best of all? And the son said, Sharanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smana Pala Sevana, Ajamanam Dasam Satyam. When he heard of the life for a process, he was so upset, he threw the baby on the ground. Yeah. So, this life for a process that we discuss, relish, preach, was first spoken by Nala Muni when he was instructing Pala's mother. Pala's father was performing extreme austerity. If you had some idea of the ascetic they performed, you would be surprised. For example, he stood on his toes with his hands raised over the sky for hundreds of years. Some of you may be doing yoga, and we may have yoga experts. How long can you stand on your toes? Half an hour? Can anyone stand on your toes for hundred celestial years? No, no one can. He did. So, Yana Kachipu, the Pope formed the austerities, become deathless. And the Delhi gods, headed by Indra, thought is a good chance that has dragged Mrs. Yana Kachipu to our, our protection. And when the child appears, we will kill him. But we don't want another like father, like son. But then, now the movie appeared on the scene again. Now, the child in the womb of this lady, the great sage. The Prahlad had the fortune of receiving instruction to be born in the womb of the mother. The life starts in the womb of the mother. Life doesn't start until you come out of the womb. The, those who are looking at abortion say, Oh, life starts after you come out of the womb. The specialist knows life starts in the womb of the mother. So, Prahlad was enlightened from a young age. So, this ninefold process is beginning with Shanam Kirtanam, and with the, which is the foundation of our spiritual life was first spoken by Nala Muni. So the definition of a transcendentalist is that he is absorbed in chanting and hearing. Now the nature of this spiritual subject matter is fully satisfied one. In the Bhagavatam you see the Pariksit Mahaj decided to fast and to death. The Pariksit Mahaj was given a notice. What was the notice? What was the notice? So he prepared for his departure. How did he prepare? In a very glorious way. Normally when the materialist is departing, he calls all his family members. They cry, he cries. <laughs> and he decides how the property should be distributed. Yeah. When a spiritualist looks forward to the opportunity to hear and chant of the holy names of the Lord by leaving his body, that is the desire of the spiritualist. So, hearing and chanting is our foundation. 
has no limitation which is a ground reality so kopina dev is saying the transcendentalist because he is absorbed in hearing and chanting about spiritual subject matter he is totally satisfied in all conditions so that is the definition of a sadhu in interest is an element of it now i mean the purport we'll come back to this point later in the purport probably made many significant points where is probably talks about the mainly the material existence do you think you need to worry there is mainly material existence or not yeah there is even in Mauritius <laughs> someone said Mauritius is mainly free <laughs> and that true or false false or I was wondering how it may be different. Okay, <laughs> the proper says in the purport that multiple miseries of material existence, both pertaining to the body and the mind, those imposed by other entities. So as we know, there are seven fold miseries of life. Is that right? And Krishna characterizes or summarizes them in two words. The kalayam, the kalayam means there is nothing but misery, and the shayana means everything is temporary. So doesn't matter how solid an arrangement you may make, everything is temporary, and there is nothing but misery. Now, how do we experience this misery? How do we experience it? The various ways. Of course, one is the standard birth and disease old age. Is birth an enjoyable experience? No, it's not. It's not an enjoyable experience. Very painful experience. The child of the mother's womb is the most uncomfortable position. Papa said, if you want to sit down with your head bowing down like a bow, The mother's womb of the child is situated there. Sit down with her, the head bent. We're going to sit for one second. But sitting in that position for nine months, no, it's not an enjoyable process. Then disease. Does anybody like disease? No. I know some people like it. Doctors. <laughs> I once asked the doctor, "How is business?" He said, "Very bad." I said, "Why?" I mean, doctors, business is bad. They say, "Be healthy, see that people don't fall sick." <laughs> so I said, "Many people fall sick." They said, "The lady, see that." So the doctor said, "Sir, be happy to fall sick." They may say get well soon, but in their hearts they want you to fall sick. <laughs> Because if you don't fall, if you don't fall sick, they'll be out of business. Then you have the hospital owners, like in your country, you have the Apollo. There is Dr. Reddy, the owner of Apollo. He has about fifty hospitals all over the world, and he's happy when people get diseased. Because otherwise, they'll be out of business. And the pharmaceutical manufacturers, they are happy if you fall sick. That's why we don't buy the medicine. All the chemist shops in Mauritius are closed. You don't fall sick. So this is disease. Then there's the old age. Does anyone like old age? No, no one likes old age. If you compliment a man by saying, if you compliment an old man by saying. How young he looks! And you saw the young man by saying, "How old you look!" And the way life goes. Right? If there was a plan out, and the Bible would be restoring you, how can you ask me? How you exchange 
and all eight of you, and so no satisfaction. Then the disease, and the and But that's not the end of the story. If that was the end of the story, it wouldn't be so bad. To complicate life, to complicate matters more, you have three other forms of misery. Am I right? What are they? What are they? Are they body? Are they living? Are they hungry? Misery is caused by the mind. Oh, that's so much. Does the mind cause your misery? In my case, you see your neighbor has something which you don't have. The mind haunts you. You don't get the honor you think you deserve, the mind haunts you. You see a product being promoted and you don't buy it, the mind haunts you. That's many parts of the mind. Something happens to a beloved relative or friend and the mind haunts you. And you keep on crying, 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 crying. Crying won't bring that person back. We should be crying when we see somebody who is not practicing Krishna consciousness. When I'm crying for someone and someone's already departed, it's not going to help you in any way. So, mind gives us misery in many ways. Then you have natural calamities, and cyclone is one of them, earthquake, drought, flood. Lately, in the middle of the world, the frequency of natural disasters has gone up six to ten times. Previously, there would be a major disaster once in ten, fifteen years. Now it's very common. Even in countries like America, they supposedly have all the technology. The material misery takes place. What is that? Oh, no. So, this is caused by material nature. Then, other living entities. So basically, material life is nothing but full of misery from beginning to end. In the middle, we see flashes of comfort. That's like Prabhupada used to say. In the old days, the system of punishment was they would take a criminal make deep in the sea, duck his head under water, just to make sure he doesn't die. Give him some temporary relief. Again, push his head under water. So that's what we see. Making the end is accompanied by misery. But occasionally you see some flashes of comfort. And when you see those flashes of comfort, you can do it. Oh, the misery. Where is the misery? It is just propaganda of the sadhu. So, Prophet saying, the miseries imposed are very severe. And one is Follow the sadhu. Doesn't get disturbed. Then his senses are engaged in service to the Lord. And Prabhupada gives the example of Amrish Maharaj. How Amrish Maharaj engaged his senses constantly in service to the Lord. Amrish Maharaj was a king. And he was a king. And still engage himself in his senses and service of God. What did Amrish Maharaj do? He used his mind to think about the Lord. He used his legs to walk to the temple of the Lord. He used his hands to clean the temple of the Lord. He used his son to, to do what? Chant the holy name. And taste Krishna Prashad. Sang has two valuable functions. Both are important. The tongue, the belly, and the genitals. They're all in a straight line. If the tongue is controlled, 
then it will be easier to control the other senses. When the tongue is not in control, then it becomes difficult. And the tongue should be used for what? In the Bhagavad Gita, you read about austerities of the mind, body and the tongue. You know that? What does Krishna say are the austerities of the tongue? The first austerity is speak the truth. Speak! But speak the truth. And especially when you come to spiritual life, pursue the truthful message of the Lord. And that's what it means, speak the truth. The moral is the duty of the Lord's tongue. And that duty of the tongue is speak the truth, but speak it in a palatable way. For example, let's say you want to correct someone. Okay, and that's not uncommon in a spiritual institution. When you correct someone, you have two alternatives. Okay. Hey, fool, can't you see this mistake you make again and again? <laughs> that's a more crude way of dealing. And if you do it sweetly, Prabhu, this could be improved in this manner. You get more positive response. So, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, the charity of the tongue is to speak the truth. Why? Because we are so used to speaking lies. Am I right? People lie in this country. Yeah. We are so used to speaking lies. And when we have to speak the truth, it's painful. Because we are so used to lying. Well, well that's not the end of the story. To speak the truth, but speak it in a palatable way. If you are dealing the palatable, you will encourage a more harmonious atmosphere. More harmonious atmosphere in any community can be realized. We speak the truth, speak it in a palatable way. Then, speak the glory for the Supreme Lord. That's another austerity of the tongue. In the nectar of instruction prepared by Rupa Goswami, Rupa Goswami says, Atyahara Paisarashta Prajalpa Yamadha. Prajalpa is talk not related to the Lord. Prajalpa is topics that are destructive on the spiritual path. Now we are born in an environment where everyone is doing Prajalpa, am I right? Yes, no. You're working in an office. All you hear is Prajalpa everywhere. You go to school, college, you hear Prajalpa, am I right? So, that's misuse of the tongue. But the devotee is understanding it. Prajalpa is not going to help me. So why should I engage in activities that are not going to help me? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was instructing Sanatana Goswami on the process of the devotional service. And the first condition he gave was accept what is favorable and reject what is unfavorable. So Prajapa is an unfavorable activity. And what is the opposite of Prajapa? What is the opposite of Prajapa? Krishna. Krishna Kata is constructive. So engage the tongue in positive activity. So, Kapila Dev is saying, the genuine sadhu whose association Kapila Dev has recommended earlier, he must be engaged in dancing, singing, chanting and dancing, and chanting and hearing, the dance and the this matter. And if you absorb yourself spiritually, then the mutual miseries will not be an obstruction. Then even the material miseries are there, you have the courage to face up to it. So Kapila Dev is saying, do not suffer because why do the why do the spiritualist not experience the material miseries? Because they're absorbed 
is something more important. Just like if you have a job, you pay you a certain amount, you get something with a higher amount, you go in there. So spiritual activities give us higher pleasure. Spiritual activities are more pleasurable than spiritual activities. But someone may say, that's what you say. But we know, we don't experience that happiness. Why is that? We don't experience spiritual happiness because we're not taking the medicine properly. If we take the spiritual medicine properly, then it's guaranteed to deliver the goods. For example, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the opening line of the Sikshashaka, what did he say? What did he say? One of the benefits of chanting the holy name is it cleanses your heart. Our heart is, as Prabhupada used to say, as black as coal. Coal is dark, isn't it? Can you imagine anything darker than that? Yes, your heart. <laughs> Something harder than the coal is our heart. The heart has more material desires than ever. So to eliminate or to cleanse that dirt requires an effort. And what is that effort? Which I never Not only does it cleanse the heart, but it also does something else for you. What is that? Ananda Bodhi Vardhana gives you unending spiritual pleasure. Gives you pleasure. Ramana said, Nata Guru Sadakata in Vishnu. People do not know how we are happy to be born. So those of you who are sitting here are connected to this one. No, how the real happiness can be found. And he transcends in this note, if I want real happiness, if I want to escape the miseries of life, then what is the solution? The world of service. It begins with chanting here. So a genuine sadhu, like Kapila Deva has said, transfer your attachment from the materialist to a saintly person. What does that mean and how do you recognize a saintly person? That has been explained in the verse before, in the famous verse, Diksha Karuni Kaha, Sudha Sarva, Reina Majidava Sarva Sanka, Sadva Sadhu Bhushana. This is a famous verse. How many of you have this verse memorized? So, almost everyone in every temple knows it. Anyway, Krishna, Kapila Deva explained the qualities of a sadhu. And now he's further elaborating. The genuine sadhu, genuine transcendentalist, is absorbed in chanting and hearing. Papa gave us this principle of chanting 16 now. When Prabhupada started the Krishna conscious movement in America, he told the devotees, chant 64 realms a day. <laughs> At that time, there were only American devotees. So uh, that was the first time. They tried chanting 64 realms, they couldn't. They came to Prabhupada and said, Swami, the only thing they call Prabhupada Swami, Swami, we can't chant 64 realms. Swami said, Okay, do 32 rounds. They tried 32 rounds. They couldn't do that. So they came back to Prabhupada and said, Swami, 30 rounds is also difficult. <laughs> then Prabhupada said, 60 rounds and final, no more. <laughs> the son and the devotee say, Prabhupada reduced it from 64 to 60, and you reduce it from 60 to 4. So he said, No. 
But they were fine tuning and to be done. And been done by Prabhupada. He did Shaya for the day. So, if we chant that 16 hours, we follow the regular principles. And then even the letters that Prabhupada said, we can go back to Godhead. So he trans is endless. He may not be totally absorbed. You may say, there's a still higher goal for me to achieve. 24 hours of the chant, Hare Krishna, anyhow. I'm not fit for that. I'm not ready for that. So you have a discount. The voice of discount. Chant 16 hours a day. And we chant 16 hours a day. Follow the principle. And then there's a guarantee to take you back to God. So Prabhupada says here in the purple, the one who is spiritually engaged is totally satisfied. And then the material miseries do not happen. The material miseries are there. Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami were holding a very important position in the government of the Mahabharata. At heart, they were devotees of the Lord, but they were forced politically to accept that job. They secretly went in the night to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in where? Ramakiri. He did not in Bangladesh. And what is it? What did it say? Kiyami. Please tell us. In society, everyone thinks I'm mean, we are learned, but even we don't even know who we are. Please tell us how we can free ourselves with the material So this person of chanting and hearing is the main activity of a sadhana. And the main activity of a transcendental is not only chant, but also to preach. Preach the glories of chanting. To encourage others to chant. And that is how we recognize a saintly person. A saintly person has a single point agenda that is to become Krishna consciousness and make others Krishna conscious. And if it's the same in that world, then Krishna reciprocates. Krishna says, Those who worship me with devotion, I preserve what they have and I make up what they lack. So, this word describes the quality of the word transcendently and we should draw inspiration from this. This is a guide for all of us. We should think, oh, this definition is only for the Mahatmas. It's not for us. So this definition is for everyone. We are Brahmachari, Kriyasa, Anapasa. This is for anyone who is interested in going back to God and freeing us from a material existence. Of course, not everyone will be interested, but those of you who got connected to Islam are fortunate to be to take this process seriously. And by associating with those who are chanting and hearing, by associating with those who are engaged in spiritual activity, we also get inspired. In this section of the Bhagavatam, there is the utmost concentration on spiritual association. Where spiritual association influences our lifestyle. Spiritual association makes us up to the reality. Spiritual association guides us to the right path. We associate with and Mahani. So we do associate with those are spiritually inspired. And by this association, we can also benefit. So the most important thing is hearing and chanting. That is the foundation of our spiritual life. Everyone agrees? Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> We can take our questions for some time if you want. Could you please discount uh, Krishna consciousness in a nutshell? 
you have come too late. In Russia, the Krishna is the supreme. We are the part and parcel. Our business is engaged. The body, mind, and senses in service of the Lord. Hey, yes. Sometimes it's not always in the class. We sometimes find so many excuses to come to service. We find so many excuses when we can't. How can we take sometimes go to go to take initiation and only is in the enthusiastic and after when they do some service and then they find so many excuses to not do service. Yes. Look for excuses to avoid service. We are the losers, not the gainers. If we gain in service, you're the gainer. If you chant your rounds, you're the gainer. If you don't chant, don't do service, you're the loser. The spiritual master or the sadhu. Or your associate is reminding you about the importance of fortune service. He's doing his job. But if you don't follow him, you're the loser. The doctor gives you, gives you the medicine and the diet, but if you don't take it, you won't recover from the disease. Isn't it? So, why do we become lax? Become the action of various factors. One is offensive, sometimes they're too offensive, and bad association. In the beginning, we are regular coming to the temple, hearing classes, then I'll be initiating many. But now I know everything. They're going to say the same thing again and again. I don't need to associate. And then we gradually withdraw. We should constantly. Desire to associate with the body and stay in their association. Coming to Bhagavadam class is very necessary. Very often we don't come to Bhagavadam class. When some senior devotee comes, we come. So we should come to the class regardless as long as the message that is being spoken is added to it. Now that it's like you go to watch a movie, what you see who's acting in it, who the stars are, and if they're a famous star, then you go and watch the movie. It's not like that. You should come in here, and anyone who's giving you your message of Lord. Yes. Take it aloud. Even after doing so much tapasya, they are not able to control it. They need to do some focus. Because everyone is It's a good question. The amazing question is, Prajalpa is a weakness with all of us. Is that the right? What is the reason? The reason is, we haven't developed the higher taste. The lower taste is Prajalpa. The highest taste is the holy name. And in the initial stages, we still attracted to the lower taste. So Rupa Goswami says, the holy name of the, of the Lord is sweet, but because our tongue is afflicted with the Vidya, we can't experience the sweetness of the holy name. And then, what's the cure? Is there a cure? Yes, no. What's the cure? Who knows? Rupa Goswami says, but if you attentively share the holy name, then the disease of Avidya will get cured. So the disease can be cured. No, Rupa Goswami says, Musahane Shyadharya Adda Kama Pavajana Sangha Dhyagya Sangha And this disease will not be cured 
Vishnu do Pajalpa. So if we do Pajalpa in the density means we are not endeavoring to dwell the higher day. So when somebody comes to you to do Pajalpa, tell him, Prabhu, I'm not so advanced. You don't involve me. You pajalpa with the wall. But it takes two to tangle, they say in English. You know what it means? It takes two to tangle. The speaker and the listener. So somebody has to be a listener also. We don't come, we don't give a patient hearing. The other person will stop. But you also have a taste of pajalpa. So the two click together. <laughs> no, I mean, when I say you, I mean a plural you, not a singular you. That's why hearing is important. Hearing the class is important. Reading the books is important. One of the big weakness we have, we don't read proper books enough. I can see that by the question. We should, really, we should make a rule. Read every day for at least one hour. If you read every day, then your mind will be engrossed in spiritual desire. Because we don't read, our old habits stay alive and they keep influencing us. Before, how many of you read Prabhupada books every day? Some do, but it's a small percentage. We should all make a resolution. We all read Prabhupada books for one hour a day. That will help a lot. Okay, any more questions? Yes. So what should we do? I'm sorry, can you repeat? As we practice, we get rid of our material desires, but still the comfort zone is still here. What should we do? Keep practicing. Don't think that. I practiced for two years, now I can take a break. Don't have any spiritual holidays. Just like, you know, just like. Just like in your country, uh, January 1st, 2nd was a New Year holiday. In the middle of life, we look forward to holidays. The school children jump up in their holidays. Isn't it? And when they come back to school after holiday, they're so painful. Am I right? You work five days a week and you look forward to the weekend. If you're a rich man, on the weekend you go to a retreat. Why? Because we get bored. We never say, can I have a weekend off from chanting? <laughs> no. So what we need to do is constantly practice the emotional process and constantly practice and be determined. Our determination is weak. It starts and it fades. So we, that's why the scripture has said determination is very important. Any more questions? Yes. Well, as I just said, you need determination for everything. Doing sadhana. And the process is satisfying. Sometimes people think, oh, there's too much austerity in this con. We hear that. It's a fact. But Lord Rishadev says, Tapo Deviyam Putsaka Yena Sattva. If you practice austerity, in the end you will get a little bit happy. So, the solution is very simple. The path given to us by the great sages is flawless. You just need to practice it with faith. Yes. Right. Um, you know, many people, you know, 
Yes, we try. Yeah. But there are many temples in Bengal to do Maya for Bombay Pool. No? But the key is having faith in Prabhupada's word. Prabhupada said, if you want to please me, what do you do? What did Prabhupada say? So how many of you want to please Prabhupada? Oh. <laughs> I don't see that in your activity. <laughs> How many of you took part in the book marathon in December? Very few. So all of you don't want to be in power. I would say, if you want to please me, you should be my book. Why? Well, these books can be in transcend of wisdom. They can help us. I mean, just like if I were to ask each of you, how did you come to the movement? You would say, A, someone gave me a book, B, someone invited me, isn't it? And, it was, and how do we sustain our spiritual life? By reading these books and listening to the books. So reading the books is very important if you want to make spiritual advance. Okay. Any more questions? Yes, last question. Is it not that because that because of little offenses that we develop that we cannot develop the higher things and which are the result and need to present that because of small offenses? Offenses should be avoided. That's why in every temple of Iskon, every morning we chant ten offenses. Offenses should be avoided. What was your question? That is, uh, because of offenses, one does not get not the higher peace, and then as a result, you get indulged in the perfection. Well, uh, offenses should be avoided. There are different types of offenses. One is Guru Prahad, Vaishnava Prahad. Then there's offenses in the chanting of the Holy Name. Generally, we should avoid the offenses. And they're not difficult to avoid. At least we should not be motivated by envy, hatred, jealousy, etc. These are dangerous. The Holy Lord came in and said, just like a beautiful garden gets spoiled when a mad element comes in. These offenses spoil the spiritual life. They avoid offenses. They even offenses one day. Okay? Now, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna.